Hey hi everyone, this is Mukesh Utwani once again from learnhyperdimension.com. Today in this video, we are going to talk about page object model in Playwright. This video will be divided into multiple parts. We'll talk about different things in this video. So first we'll talk about what exactly is page object model. Then we'll talk about why do we need page object model. And we'll also talk about how we can implement. So until you don't understand what and why do we need it, how part will be a little challenging. So let's talk about what exactly is page object model. And the short term of this is POM, which is again page object model. Now, again, there's a misconception that we have to use page object model only with Playwright. It's a design pattern. It's not a framework. It's a generic design pattern. Now, if you ask me what is design pattern, it is nothing but basically some set of rules, best practices that we have to follow so that we can achieve maintenance and reusability. There are multiple design patterns in the market, but mostly we use page object model for automation. So we'll use page object model with Playwright. Now, when you talk about page object model, it's not only you have to use with Playwright, irrespective of which tool you're using, which framework you're using, you can still use page object model. So, you know, we can use page object model, we can use with Selenium, we can use with Playwright, we can use with Cypress, we can use with WebDriver IO. Irrespective of which framework and tool you're using, you can implement. So, once you understand page object model, once you have clarity, so in future, if you switch to any other tool or framework also, you can use the same approach. Now, why do we call this as pages? First of all, we need to understand. Mostly we use this design pattern whenever you have to automate one web application. It totally depends how many pages you have in your application. Now, let's say this is your web application. Now, your web application definitely will have multiple functionalities, multiple features, and you will have multiple pages. Now when I say pages, let's say this is my web application. I will have login page for sure. We will also have one registration page. Along with this, once you log in, you will have definitely the dashboard page, right? Suppose you're dealing with e-commerce application, then you will have category pages, payment pages, and multiple pages depends on what kind of application you automate. So what we do here, we try to replicate pages in our programming. So suppose if you have a login page in your application, we'll try to create a login page in our programming. So programming, uh, in terms of programming, we will create classes. These classes will have locators and the methods which you will perform on these locators. So if I have to replicate the same thing in programming, what we will do for every page, we will create a dedicated class. So let's say this is my login page in application. So we'll create login page class here. If I have home page, I will create home page class. If I have, let's say payment, I will create payment class and so on. Depends on the application. You have to design pages. Now the question comes, what these pages will have? These pages will have mostly locators. Suppose if we're dealing with login page, username, password, login button, and all the elements which is available in the login page, you will create locators. Then you will have methods which will perform operation on these elements. Similarly, when you deal with home pages, home page, you will have locators and you will have methods which will perform operation on these locators. Let's say this is payment page and so on. So locators and the method. Once these pages are ready, you will design your script. So let's say I have to design one test script or let's say test methods. I will be using these pages. For example, this is my uh, test script one or test case one. My test case has to go through complete flow. It will go through the login page then we'll go to home page, then it will go to payment page and subsequent pages. So what exactly we will do? We will use these pages. Now depends on what kind of operation you want to perform. You can create methods and you can access them. That is the whole idea of page object model. But the question comes, why do we need it? Right? We discussed about what is page object model. 
Why do we need it? Because of two main reasons. There could be multiple, but these are the two primary reasons. One is called reusability. And the second reason is called maintenance. Now how we can reuse and how we can maintain, let me show you. This I will write down the next page. Now suppose you are creating multiple test cases. Now each and every test by default it has to go through login, right? So this also needs login page. This also needs login page. This also needs login page. Now we have locators here, we have methods here. So let's say this is test script 2, test scripts 3, test script 4. I'm taking one example, the concept will remain same for multiple scenarios, multiple test scripts. Now it has to log in, it has to log in, it has to log in and this has to log in. What we have done is we have our username locator, password locator and button here, right? If I create a method in this particular page, which is login page, method is already created. So anyone who is designing these test scripts, they can directly call this method, right? Because method is created, they just need to call, pass the required parameter. Let's say your application supports multiple credentials, basic username, admin username, password, super admin, uh, user with less restriction. So you will have multiple credentials. So basically you can call this method and all the script can reuse it. So that is the first point. Why do we need page object model? So whatever theory I will show you now, we will try to replicate the same in the second part of this video. So I would recommend you to watch the video till the end so that you will have more clarity. So the first part is reusability. Once you create a method, all the other test cases, test scripts can reuse it. Second is maintenance. Now how maintenance uh, will be coming into picture? Now definitely every application has to go through multiple changes. Now it could be enhancement, it could be bug fixes, it could be the new component is getting released. So maintenance is part of the automation. But how we can reduce the maintenance, that is our primary goal. So again, let's consider this part. You have stored locator, username, password and the button part. And all these scripts are using this method, right? Or using these pages. Tomorrow, UI changes or let's say locator got updated. Initially, here ID was email one. Now it is email two. Now in this case, you don't need to modify all the script. What you can do, you can come to this page, update this locator from email one to email two. I'm just taking one very basic example. Focus on the fundamentals as of now. So instead of modifying all the scripts, I will go to that login page. I will update this locator and all these test scripts will be using the same locator, right? So no need to update individual test cases. You can go ahead and modify the pages. So that's how you can reduce the maintenance. I took example of login page, but the same example will be applicable for every page and every locator. So page object model is a design pattern. Using this design pattern, we will be building our framework. In this case, when we talk about playwright, we will create certain JavaScript classes. We'll have constructor which will initialize uh, the locators. Then we'll have methods which we will reuse in our multiple spec files. So this is the theory about page object model. We started with what is page object model, then why do we need it and how to implement in Playwright, we'll see now. Now let's try to understand how we can implement page object model in Playwright. Now before I explain how to create pages, how to create tests using page object model, I'm going to use this application which is freelance learn automation very basic application to log in, log out, create courses, create category, and we'll be using this. But this page object model is independent of any application. It means you can go with any application, but the concept will remain same. So what we'll do, we'll try to first do one login scenario. So you can also use the same username and password. I will share this at the end of this video. The moment you log in, then it will navigate to the home page. So that was our login page and this is our home page. In home page, now you can do multiple activities. 
you can see the multiple courses you can enroll for these courses right these are dummy courses but what we'll do we'll try to reach till this home page now this home page you can do multiple activities you can create courses categories cart option what we'll do once we reach till this home page then we'll interact with this navigation pane and we'll try to do sign out and we'll come back to this page again but if you want to explore further uh, scenarios you can automate this complete end-to-end -end application using the same approach yeah so let's start with this since in this process I will be dealing with two pages this is my login page and this will be the home page but let's say you want to go to manage courses you will have one more page which is manage course pages let's say if you deal with one more page this is category page okay manage categories page so I will show you with two but more than two the process will remain same okay so now I will go back to VS code so these are the previous examples that I have written and already these videos are available on my YouTube channel so you can go ahead and watch the playlist now I have to create one separate folder where I will maintain these pages all of our tests will be in this right these are the tests that we have written in the past I'm going to create a new not inside the test select the complete page directory and click and let's say this pages inside this folder will maintain all these pages let me start with our first page which is login so I'm going to create a dedicated JS file let's call this as login page dot js now this js file will have the locators and will have the methods which will perform operation on these particular elements in our case we have to manage username password and this login button right now in order to implement this page object model you should have a fair understanding about what is class what is constructor what is method how to export in case if you're not aware of these concepts then I have a dedicated playlist so you can go to my YouTube channel and watch this series but as of now I'm assuming that you are comfortable with this oops concept so I'm going to create a dedicated class I will use class keyword then I will create a class called login page start and end okay now next thing is you need to create a constructor so basically once we create object of this class the constructor will be called and whatever locators we will mention that will be initialized so I'm going to write constructor so type constructor and this will be parameterized constructor and we will accept one argument called page that is the first step now I need to initialize this page which we will get from our test cases to this particular page now once your constructor is done we will be using this page okay and this page will be coming from our test cases but we also need page in this particular class so I will be using one keyword called this and I need page here so I will say this dot page equal to page it means whatever page we will get from the test case will assign to our current class which is login page so it means whenever I have to access page here I will say this dot page now we need certain locators right in order to continue so let's say I want to type something here so now you can see we have ID we have name we have placeholder we have type so now you can write XPath you can write CSS selector I'm using this ID directly so I will copy this and I will say this and I will use something called username you can go with any name I'm going this dot username and since we're using ID I will use hash and what ID we have email one but if you have any other locator xpath CSS selector you can write directly here next thing that in is password so let's say I want to type here now again you can go with ID but let me show you let's say if you want to go with xpath how you can use xpath now you can write your xpath or I'm using this uh, selector sub plugin where this xpath will be generated automatically if you want to write your own xpath you can type here let's say I will say find the input tag and you can see we have a placeholder called enter password so I will say placeholder equal to enter password so this is getting highlighted can you see on the screen so I will copy this 
So this is just to show you I've created XPath, but in case if you want to go with direct IDs, you can go ahead. So I will use one variable called password and I will enter this XPath. Similarly, I have to interact with login button or sign in button. So if I go ahead and say, we have a sign in text, I can go with class, I can go with type equal to submit. Now again, we got XPath here. So you can go with normalized space or you can go directly go with the text. So if I write XPath, that find a button where text equal to sign in. So this is highlighting. So I can copy this and I will say this dot login button. You can give login button, submit button. I'm using login button and I will use double quotes and I will paste this. So now I have three elements. One is username, one is password, one is login button, and one is the page which will be coming directly from the test cases. Now, once your web elements are done, we need to create a method which will work with these locators. So I'm going to create one method and you have to use a sync keyword and you can give the method name. Let's say the method name I want to write login to application. So whenever somebody will call this method, we will be using these locators and will perform operation. Now let's perform some operations. So I will write await. I need this page. So I have to access via this dot page. So I will say this dot page. Now in order to type, we use fill. So I will say fill. So first it will ask me, uh, basically, the locator and then what values you want to enter. So I want to enter to this particular field, which is this dot username. So I will say this dot username. What I want to type, I want to type as of now, admin at the rate email.com. Same thing I have to do for password because first we have to enter username, then password. So I will say await this dot page dot fill for which element this element so this dot password what to type admin at the rate one two three you can use the same password or if you want to create your own account you can create your own account and use the same once you type password i have to click so i will say await this dot page for click we use click method but where to click this dot login button that's all our page is ready so simply we created a class and i have given class name is login page we created a constructor which will accept page as an argument then we are initializing page in the current class plus username password and login button which is nothing but locators then we have to use this locator and type values now once you're done you need to export See now when you can, when you talk about JavaScript, you can export a particular variable, you can export a particular method, or you can export this complete class. So this class, which we have created, which is basically login page, I'm going to export this so that I can use into different classes. So you need to write module dot exports. Okay. Please remember it's exports. And what I want to export login page. That's all. Now let me use this page to create one test and once you understand how to create one page then we'll create another page and then we'll create a link. So go to this test folder and let's create one more file login application dot spec dot js. Now, just to save some time, we already have written multiple times this script. Okay. So I will import. First of all, we need this require, which is playwright test. So I will copy this. Then we need at least one test. So I will copy this. Now we can continue with the application. Now, if you are completely new to playwright, I would highly recommend you to go through the basics first because once you understand basics then only you will understand page object model 
okay so now this is the default url which anyways we don't want we want to automate this one right so i will copy this and i will paste here now the most important part once we load the application i want to log in right and everything we have written already in this login page so we are exporting here something called login page so we definitely we need to import here so either you can use import or require it's up to you so i will say first require now what we want basically i want to go to current root directory then we created something called pages if you see we have created pages right so i will say go to pages and what you want to import we have this file right login page.js we want to import this now once you import you have to store in a variable let's say const variable and i will call this as login page simple thing we are exporting from here and we are importing here so using this login page we can access the method that we have created here so once you are done with this importing you just need to create object of that particular class how do we create object using new for which class login page and in the constructor we will pass the page so whatever page we have so page is nothing but isolated page instance for each and every test this will be created and this is isolated between the test so whenever you pass this page this will be basically passed here and it will initialize to this particular class which we are using anyways so once you create object you have to store in a variable so we'll store in a variable called login page and now using this object i can access the method so if i say login page the moment i put dot you can see i'm able to access this method which is login to application and we are done so we created our first page we imported this page here and we created object and now we are calling this method now before we execute you need to also use await here now let's run this if login works then we'll create a new page now you can run from here okay so the moment i run it executed in headless mode so now if i want to run in headed mode i can use cli commands so i will use npx play write test i want to run this particular file which is login application dot spec dot js which is available inside test folder so i will say dot slash test -ts, then login application dot spec dot js so from cli i am running this now when i don't mention again it will run by default in the headless mode so i will say hyphen hyphen headed hit enter and it was very fast and it executed within a second like it took hardly 1.4 second so if you want to see this report you can execute this it executed right it entered email password button it captured the screenshot and the video so let's say if you see the video right it entered username password and it did the sign up if you want to pause and see you can do that as well so let's say after login button i want to pause so write await this dot page and pause again stop this first clear and run in headed mode yeah. so it did the login and the moment i clicked on pause now until i don't click on resume it will stay here and after the login you can see it landed to the home page so when execute this the test is working fine it means page one is correct now let's move on and let's try to see that how can i click on this then how can i click on sign out so obviously now in order to deal with home page i need to create one more page so go to this pages folder and let's create home page dot js file 
and again we need a class so I will give this class is home page and again I need constructor so I will write constructor which will accept page this dot page equal to page now in the home page I want to click on this menu right so let's inspect this first this is actually an image which have source which has one alt attribute so I'm going to use this alt attribute this is the xpath which I got double slash img find alt tag sorry alt attribute value equal to menu I will copy this xpath and let's say I want to call this as this dot menu equal to xpath that we have written the moment you click on this you can see we have sign out so let me inspect sign out now sign out is having a text so I can use basically text now or I can use normalize space function I copied the xpath and I will say this dot logout logout option equal to now I have to create method which will basically work with these three locators so let's create one method and let's use them so come down write first a sync and the method name I want to write method name is logout from application start and end now I have to use these two so again await this dot page dot click where we have to click this dot menu similarly I have to click on sign out so await this dot page dot click and I will say this dot logout option this page is also done come back here we need to first export right so just after this class right export first you have to say module dot exports what you want to export complete page home page and once you export you have to import here so again I will say require first I will write double dot then I want to go to pages which page home page what we are exporting home page right so we'll receive home page use const home page now in order to access I need to create object right so I will create object now so again new home page I will expect like I will pass page and now we'll get home page object I will say home page and once we get this home page home page dot logout from application and let's use await here so we are done with two pages now let's execute you will see a couple of challenges which we will fix one by one but let's execute this first okay I have not removed pause so the moment I removed pause basically after pause it executed this method it did click on the menu and then it did log out so let me remove this pause and execute once again it was too quick right so we can add weight but again adding weight will not make any sense but if you want to slow down you can do that again if you execute it it passed and if you see the report so it started with username password button then it clicked on menu clicked on sign out and we got the video too if you see the video it's very short but 
you are able to see the execution now how you will verify see writing test is not only type and click basically you have to verify that after login are you able to log in successfully after logout are you able to log out successfully or not so basically we need to add assertions so let's add some assertions so first of all i will do control c i will clear everything now my first check would be the moment i do let's say login after login i want to verify this manage because notice one thing this menu is always available right so i cannot rely on this menu because this menu is available before login also and after login as well but manage cart all these options will come once we do proper sign in so i have to verify this manage so again inspect this so this is a text again manage text and i got the xpath if you want to write your own xpath say double slash span text manage or normalize space manage i will copy this now go to home page because this element is coming on the home page right so i will come to this home page dot js file and i will say this dot manage option and i will use this xpath and i will write a dedicated method which will check basically whether this manage is present or not so again a sync and i will check verify manage option this is the method that i'm creating now i have to use something called expect which comes by default with playwright but if you notice we are not importing or we are not using required statement to import playwright right so write here call require what we need we need basically playwright so use double quotes at the rate playwright test and you can store this and we will only get expect you can get many things from this module but we are we are doing is we are extracting only expect now i can write here await expect what we are expecting this particular element so i will say this dot page uh first i want to locate say i want don't want to perform any operation i just want to locate which element i want to locate manage option and what is my condition that it has to be visible that's all so i'm expecting this particular element to be visible now let's use this come back to your login application.spec.js now coming back to this we have used we created this method inside home page so using home page object only i can call so i can say uh await home page dot verify manage option now let me cross check this is getting closed here we need one more yeah, not here and method is actually locator here now how do we use this since it is coming in a home page so using this home page object we can access this so i will say home page dot verify manage options and i will use again await here let's execute perfect now we have a proper assertion if you want to see the report once again open the report yeah so it is to be visible if it is not visible definitely a session will fail and the test will fail so we are able to verify after login 
but we also have to verify after logout right what we are clicking what if we are clicking on logout button but the logout button is not working or maybe it is not navigating to the login page so we'll add one more assertion that after logout it should come back to the main login screen which means if i click on sign out i can verify anything if i can verify this sign in or maybe this login button or maybe this link it will give us surety that yes the logout is working so i can inspect this and we can verify this too right so let's say again if i write xpath it's a h2 tag and the text is sign in so i can copy this xpath or if you want to write double slash h2 text equal to sign in or normalize space sign in for this you have to come back to login page we already have email password let me also store this as header and this is the xpath now i have to use this particular header right so i will use now for home page if you notice we have used this statement so that we can use expect now i need to expect in the login page as well so i will import the same thing here and now i will use await expect now what i'm expecting that this particular element which is header again it has to be visible so again i will use this dot page first locate that element so locator which element this dot header then it has to be visible that's all so now i can call this method come back here after logout await we added this in a login page right so i will say this object which is login page and verify sign in clear execute and here we go So after sign out again it is verifying and this is the quick video perfect so this is how you can implement page object model i will give you a quick recap let me close everything so first we created login page So initially login page we created a login class then we created a constructor constructor will accept page as an argument which we will initialize to this particular page which is login page then we use username password login and we created one method and we are using send case in playwright we call fill in selenium it's send case then we added one more method okay we want to verify that after login we should go back to manage and after logout should come back here so in the same class we added one more method called verify sign in just to make sure that we are coming on the right page after logout and we using expect here that this particular element should be visible once we are done we have to export this is important otherwise you cannot import same thing we did for home page we created constructor whatever element this method is verifying manage option should be present and visible and this is logout we are also exporting this home page class directly from here in our test we created a test which is login to playwright sorry login to application using pom and we are using playwright module then we are using two pages login page home page we started the application created object call the method created object call the method and then we are using this method for verification now if you notice one thing that right now i am hard coding right so in this login page this username password is hard coded but ideally it should be parameterized 
so that whoever is using this particular method they can pass any username and password so now instead of using zero argument i will take two argument this argument which is user i will pass here as it is and this argument which is password i will pass here as it is now coming back to this instead of just calling login to application we can pass the credentials so admin at the rate email dot com password is admin at the rate one two three right now again it's hard coding but i'm not hard coding in a page i'm passing from my test and we can also pass this data directly from our json file right now this video we have already discussed already right so i'm not using it but in case if you want to take data from json file you can do that in our case we have parameterized username password which you can pass from here so let me execute one more time so this time functionality wise still same but we are passing test data from our test cases so that's a i will not say quick video it's a little lengthy video but i hope this gave you clarity how to use page object model in playwright now please give a try if you find any issue let me know and i will see you in the next video in case if you're new to this channel then make sure you share this video with your friends colleague who are learning playwright subscribe to this channel and thank you so much have a nice day bye bye